Um, as introduced, I, I'm Michael, Michael Steidel, and the lead of the IPDC photo metadata working group. Um, I'm with this group since 2004, then it was established and lead since 2008. In all the past years, we of the group listened to and talked with photo people about their needs, their wishes, but also about their complaints. This experience is the background for what I want to share with you today. Uh, first, yeah, I think uh, I'm from the photo metadata working group. Simply have a quick look at who this working group is. You see there a group of photo metadata people from IPTC members and uh, the companies, the member companies are large and small with a focus on the use of metadata by a photo person or with a focus on defining a proper standard, including the facet of semantic technology. I call this group a perfect mix. Joining this group is open to all IPDC members. So let's talk about the key topic of this group. Let's talk about photo metadata. We should be aware that photos have natively a strong role in documenting facts. After a crime, the state of the location is documented by photos. When a historic event happens, it must be documented by photos. This makes people assume a photo tells the truth. With this background, it is a logic goal to let photo metadata tell the truth. But how strict is the truth of photo metadata? Different people may have different views on that. There are people saying must, that are the grand lords of metadata. And then the more practical guys say uh, they should tell the truth and set this as a goal. And then there are some in-betweens like uh, software makers and even IPDC we say, okay, we have their foot metadata standard. It can tell the truth if it's used properly. Then there are some users that say simply, yes, okay, foot metadata tell the truth. There are some skeptic ones. They say may tell the truth. And the very skeptic ones say even it doesn't tell the truth. There are errors in it. And you see, there is a wide angle of views on telling the truth. At this point, a clarification. Photo metadata telling the truth means for this presentation, they tell true and correct facts about the image. And in this presentation, we don't talk about the truth of the pixels. That's also a topic, a discussion issue. We keep this aside today. So let's have a look at that. And uh, first we have to be aware that metadata is not exclusively for photos. Actually, each metadata type has a typical set of fields. So we have their text, audio, video, graphics. So that all makes, I call it a metadata C. Uh, but if we focus on the metadata for focus, I call it the photo metadata bay. So this is what you see here on the screen, a bay with four islands. Uh, let's jump into it and investigate it. The first investigation is who lives there? What groups of active persons and parties exist? And each group lives on one of these islands. The first one is the home base. That are the creators of the photo, the photographer and her or his company. This is from where any photo comes. The agencies and the suppliers that are companies collecting from home bases, photos, aggregating them, supplying, and also licensing photos. And the next island is the one of the publishers that are the organization posing, as we hope and keep fingers crossed, licensed photos on their website or in print. And yes, there's one island left 
and that is the island of the viewers. Actually, these are the persons viewing a photo and reading the metadata information if it is available. We must be careful about that. So we can say a straight and simple view on photo metadata tells the truth, shows it as a communication of the home base of the photo with the viewers on this faraway island. But unfortunately, the reality is much more complex. This is the reality check. The home base talks to the agencies, then the agencies talk to the suppliers, and suppliers they talk to the agencies. Finally, the images are shared with the publishers, and then the publishers uh, post them on the web, and they decide what metadata are available for the viewers. So this is the hop across the islands. And what's the fate of the photo metadata in this communication? OK, once again, the home base sends uh, photos with full and rich and true metadata to agencies and suppliers. Agents and suppliers may modify things a little bit. And so the deep red of the home base gets a little bit more bright. Then the agents and suppliers license the photos to the publishers. So already red is a little bit faded out. And then when the publishers take the decision, what of the metadata is shared with the viewers, the deep red truth may get quite pink. So if viewers check what else is known and shared about an event depicted by a photo, they may conclude the metadata provided with these photos do not tell the full truth. Details may be wrong. Some information is missing. As this information, uh, this conclusion is not nice for those who want to tell the truth, let's have a deeper look into the islands and the hopping between them. Let's start with the home base island. As said, the creators of the photo. Metadata there is based on knowledge very close to the picture event or object shown in the image. It is checked and written down. But there are not only the creators of the photo on this island. There are other involved parties, camera makers, makers of imaging software supporting the photo metadata standards, like for instance, Lightroom, Photo Mechanic, Photo Station, Photoshop. Then the makers of digital asset management software supporting photo metadata standards and also providers of artificial intelligence or machine re uh, learning systems which are supporting images to create tags for them. The next island are the agencies and suppliers. Metadata there may be edited. Let's assume corrected or improved or metadata required for attracting customers, for instance, keywords are added. The other involved parties are very similar to the ones on the home base islands. So maker of dam software and uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning system providers. Then comes the publishers island. Metadata is used, replaced or removed as the organization is interested in. We have to be clear, they have a strong impact on the forwarding of metadata. And so it could be a wide range of decision, fully used, something is replaced or completely removed. What are the other involved parties there? So makers of editorial systems for journalists, the web content management system of makers, makers the content delivery networks, which are reformatting photo photos and providing it for websites. And then also look at that search engine scrolling the website and showing found images in uh, search results. Let's hope with metadata. Okay, and finally we arrive at the final island, the viewers island. Metadata there must be displayed to them, else they can get the metadata information. 
We should be careful about that. What are the involved parties there? Makers of software showing the photo. So image viewers, web browsers, PDF viewers, file metadata viewers, a couple of things. And again, the search engines, but now showing photos as a result, let's hope with metadata. Back to our starting point. Making a photo metadata readable for viewers is communication. Primarily, the creators, the homepage, tell the viewers facts and original information. But it must be clear, many others are involved in this communication too. The distributors, the publishers, the software makers, search engines, and much more. It is a basic goal for communication and communicating the truth to communicate it well. And this requires a language. Any communication needs a language which goes beyond a bunch of single words. So actually a language needs a grammar, rules for building sentences and making statements. Most languages of Europe and the Americas use this basic grammar, subject, predicate, object. So you can say, Frank takes a photo in English, but you can do the same in French, German, Spanish, Italian, Polish. All of them use the same structure, subject, predicate, object. Many standards, for photo metadata follow this base, uh, basic grammar and build statements this way. The subject is the image itself. The predicate is a field property tag as defined by the standard, defined the property defined by a photo metadata standard. Such a predicate defines what this statement tells about the photo. Please be aware of that. The object is the value of the field. This value is set by the metadata editor. And a simple example, this image has greater Carola Ranotti. The, this image is the subject, has greater is the predicate, and object is the value, Carola Ranotti. So how does this relate to a standard? Actually, this makes a photo metadata field. You see the field label, creator, and then you have the field where you can type in Carola Renotti and set the value of this field. So photo metadata are highly integrated into this language telling facts, telling, uh, making statements about an image. So what they tell the photo metadata fields are primarily made for the human viewer. Therefore, we say and raise, we from IPTC raise a big wish. Dear photo metadata standard user, take care to use a metadata field as defined by its standard. This supports photo metadata tells the truth. And this is how we try to help you. For IPDC for photo metadata, you have there a user guide. This user guide is grouping fields by a list of categories. So general inf image content, person shown in the image, locations, other things shown in the image, how to assert rights and license usages and administration and commissioning details. So you can even search there in the lexical table, uh, search for the label, and then you see what this field should do. But you can also look into the standard document, which has a definition for each and every field. So for instance, for the creator, there it reads, contains the name of the photographer. But in cases where the photographer should not be identified, the name of a company or organization may be appropriate. Frank question, were you fully aware of this definition of the IPDC creator field? 
you are invited to have a look into our standard, into the user guide or the standard document. Okay, but there is not only IPDC. Let's have a look uh, what uh, standards are out there. First, uh, to uh, say they provide a well-defined vocabulary of fields. So all the predicates which can be used for this communication. The first one I want to list there is the EXIF standard, uh, used for the images by the cameras. You see there a couple of tags, and as you see there to the right of exposure time, this dot 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 ellipses, there are much more than listed on, in this box. The next one there is the IPDC photo metadata standard. Also there is a list of uh, fields, but that are not all the fields. And the third one I want to introduce there is schema.org. This is the standard which is used for adding metadata to the HTML of a web page showing a photo. And uh, there you see also, they have also a lot of properties there. So if you look at the names of the listed fields, you see quite similar ones in a row across the standards. For instance, about date, artist or creator or copyright. This triggers the thinking, it must make sense to forward the value from one standard to the next one. Oh, sorry. Uh, to the next one, as these arrows show from date and time original to date created, and from date created to schema.org date created. Yeah, finally, congratulations to IPDC for the metadata standard. Hooray! It is in use for 25 years now. In 1995, a version of Photoshop using IPDC metadata was released, and most other software adopted it too, and th since then, it is heavily used. Okay, let's have a look at the use of standards in a work workflow. A first step there is to fill in metadata presets. So I think you know uh, many cameras allow to in the menu to type in the name of the artist, the creator, to type in a copyright notice, and this is a preset which is used by this camera. Or there is a feature where you can uh, uh, save a preset of metadata in a file on the memory card, which is plugged into the camera. The next step is pressing the shutter, taking the photo. The metadata of the camera and of this preset on the memory card is embedded into the image file. Okay, then we have an image file First, it is in the camera, and then it is copied to a computer. And there, the editing of metadata may start. So EXIF tags in the first round are copied to IPDC fields. Then metadata fields are edited by the user interface of the editor. IPDC fields and some EXIF tags are updated and embedded again. There in these uh, rows below, you see what happens to the EXIF in the upper row and to the IPDC fields in the lower row. Then another round and even more rounds of editing may follow, which means metadata fields are edited, corrected, updated, something like that. IPDC fields and some EXIF tags are updated uh, following that and synchronously embedded, which means if you edit the uh, creator of an image, then both the EXIF tag and the IPDC field is updated. Okay, we have a file and this file, image file may be licensed and may be published as a photo in the web page. In this case, EXIF and IPC metadata should stay embedded. Its values can be copied to schema.org metadata properties. But again, they also should stay in the embedded in the image file. 
Okay, having a look again at the uh, reality, a big threat for that uh, photo metadata data tells you truth is that this communication is broken. The viewers get nothing or only a small fragment. Correct information is not available on the viewers island. This raises the question, why is the communication broken? Okay, let's check the flow of metadata communication. First, check is your input, is the input correct? A photographer when taking the photo should check, is the date and time of the camera set correctly? Can the GPS data be received? Primarily inside buildings, there may be a bad connection to the GPS satellites. Then a photographer is first photo metadata editor. I think everybody filling in metadata should check, is this correct what I'm typing in? Then the photo metadata editor on the desk, are all values correct? Uh, which were written down by the photographer, including the spelling. So there should be a four eyes principle for that. And if a geolocation service is used for the GPS data, do the generated location name match the information of the photographer? Are both talking about the same location? And then keywords may get added by artificial intelligence or machine learning systems. Do the provided terms match the content closely? Is it really a term about what is visible in the image? So for those who had a little bit look into that, may be aware that there is a attribute score and this helps simply take a high score and this means, means this term is very close to the content. The next step uh, is to go across that and to check, and I hope you can tick them all off. Ne next round of check is, are the values kept alive after they have been typed in? Keeping alive means removed only with good reasons and not removed inadvertently. The first check is what metadata fields and values are embedded into an image file. So there is imaging software with photo metadata support and it can be used. But some pieces of software don't support all IPDC fields. You see there a, a link in this and I show you where this goes to. So IPDC has their list of software in alphabetical order. There first and then a list of them all and they show the support of IPDC metadata. IPDC suggests also to use and to check this with its get IPDC photo metadata site. Okay, what's that? You see there a link. Let's click on this link, activate it. And yes, here we have the get IPDC photo metadata site. You see this is the landing page, the form, and what can you get there? Well, actually you can get all the metadata made visible to you. That means you see what is embedded into an image file. And where could this image file be? It could be either an image on a web site, or it could be a local file on your complete, uh, computer. This is option B. In this case, you have to upload it. Or there is a third option. If you have only URL of a, a web page, you can even throw in this URL of the web page and uh, this uh, tool searches it for links for uh, relations to uh, full images inside this page. Uh, well, before I show you a practical example, I show you what you can get at a maximum. If you click there on a, a green button without filling in the image URL, you will see all the metadata which are embedded into a reference file of IPDC, which means all the IPDC fields there are populated with a value. So more than that, than that you cannot see uh, in your results. 
So the first way of uh, showing uh, metadata is a grouping by the formats. There is the IM standard or format, and there you see all the field names uh, used by IM. And then further down is the XMP field, and you see also there all the field names and the field values, and see it's a long and quite rich set of uh, metadata fields. And at the bottom, you see also a few exif fields which are related to IPDC fields. Another view on that is group by metadata topics. I remind you of this grouping on the, in the user guide where we said, okay, that are topical groupings and exactly that is done here. So there is a set or a group of fields about the image content in general. So description, headline, genre, keywords, uh, CV terms, and things like that. Then fields about persons, fields about locations, fields about other things in image, like artwork or an event or a product shown in the image. Then fields with rights information, fields about licensing, and fields about administration and commissioning, like their date created, administrative term. Image region met metadata is the uh, set at the bottom. You can define also inside an image a region and can set values for that. This is a quite special topic. I don't want to go deep into that at this presentation, but be aware that this is possible with IPDC metadata. And we have there also as a third option to use a filter. There you see only the metadata which are relevant for search engines. You see there a short list of fields and below there you see a, a introduction of how Google Images uses this for showing metadata and for the licensable badge. You will hear more about that in the presentation right after mine. And uh, this uh, shows there you can check if the requirements are fulfilled. Okay, good. So this is uh, the, what you can see as a maximum. So let's do the a practical uh, try on that. So I use there the German magazine Spiegel because I know that they have some metadata. Uh, so, okay, there is a story and there is an article about that. Okay, wonderful. Uh, okay, how to transfer this now to the uh, get photo metadata site? Mm, the long URL. Okay, there is an easier way for that go back to the get uh, photo metadata site, go back to the landing page. And there at the bottom in the right area, you see there a link. And on desktop browser, it's quite easy. You can drag and drop this link into your favorites bar of your browser. Okay, then you go back to the Corona. And now you click on this link, IPDC PMT. And uh -huh, you see there are some images on that. And now you can go across them and say, ah, uh -huh, wonderful. Uh, there, this image we have just seen. Okay, uh, it has a description, it has a headline and has some keywords. And it also has a copyright notice and the date created. Okay, wonderful. So that easy, uh, you can retrieve metadata from uh, a page, from an image which is shown on a page <coughs> with a news article. But you may also have a look at photos which are uh, shown uh, by a <coughs> platform or a web shop. So I've had a look at uh, I am. There is such a photo. Okay, and now you want what metadata are in this photo there. <coughs> you can also click there on get IPTC. 
it also shows here all the images found there. Click on the first one and wonderful. You see this uh, image posted there. Actually, it's only a thumbnail, not a real uh, licensable photo, but it already tells a lot about this image. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. This is what you can get with this tool. And the next check there is check if metadata fields displayed and used by Google Images are embedded. This is what I've shown you earlier. So exactly this can be done with this get IPDC footer metadata site. Check if embedded metadata of a photo posted on the web exists as expected. I have also shown this uh, just there with the get IPDC photo metadata site. Do it, check your own website. Are metadata there embedded into the shown photos? Check it in your web shop and check the website of your customers. And you can be happy if you have a customer like Spiegel where all the metadata are still inside embedded it. But we have there also a practical view on that. We have there a photo metadata explorer. Uh -huh. And this is home. This is the IPTC photo metadata explorer. So you see there a global map and the different countries. And if you click on one of these countries, let's click on France. You see there a website with online news and how heavily photo metadata is embedded in photos posted there. So you see there is a good example of uh, Le Figaro and Le Monde and Le Internaut. They use primarily have a look at rights and licensing. They are heavily using uh, metadata, having that embedded still, Liberation. Um, yeah, a little bit, but you see also four websites without any metadata embedded. And this is not the only one. If you look at another country, for instance, US, you see that even a majority does not embed any metadata anymore into images. Okay. I hope you can tick them all off there, your checks. And uh, then uh, uh, let's have it at another step of values kept alive. Check how open systems you are using for displaying photos, treat photo metadata. Uh, I've just shown you an example of IM there. So that are platforms having uh, photos from many, many photographers and offering them to uh, be licensed. And we at IPDC tested this a year ago, and we have there also results of that. And you see there the names of the sites. And then you see if there are green buttons, then it's good. Metadata are still embedded there in uh, photos you can download. And if you scroll down, you see there sites like Pexels, Pixabay, or Unsplash, they delete all the metadata which are embedded. So this is quite questionable, but uh, have a look at that. Don't be naive that any metadata sharing your photo will keep them alive. Check your license contracts. Now you have to do something with your own contracts. Check, do they tell customers to keep metadata alive? I know you are happy to have a, 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 a customer who pays you for a license. Uh, so you don't want to be uh, bad to them and uh, request too much. But I think at least the field's relevance for rights should be persisted also by customers posting photos on the web. Okay, I hope you can tick them all off again. We just had a view on why the metadata communication is broken. But there is another question. What helps to get out of a workflow breaking the metadata communication? Let's have a look at helpers in this context. 
The photo metadata bay needs a guide for synchronizing metadata values across standards, also called mapping of fields. Uh, you may recall the table I've shown there with the workflow, which uh, said, okay, EXIF values can be handed over to IPDC values, field values, and IPDC field values and fields can be copied over to schema.org properties and values. Currently, IPDC discusses this goal with SIPA. This is the authority behind EXIF and with schema.org. And this is what we are aiming at to have there in the left white uh, column, uh, blue on the top, the IPDC metadata, and then the corresponding EXIF uh, tags and the corresponding schema.org field. Having such a written down mapping, I think this would be a great help for a, a consistent mapping of metadata across the different standards, which means simply follow the workflow. Another helpers are the makers of software. We suggest that they should uh, consider some actions. The first, the makers of software supporting to edit metadata for single computers or for a server-based system, DAM system, they should consider keeping defined IPDC and EXIF photo metadata values in sync. This is mostly done and we are quite happy about that. And as a new consideration, it should be a function creating structured schema.org metadata for web pages. So either already filling that in or providing at least such a, a JSON object, which can be easily filled in, copied and filled into a, the HTML of a page. The makers of web content management system, CMS, should consider in the first step, importing IPDC and EXIF metadata correctly to their database. So they should simply read the definitions and map this correctly into this, what they do have. A function transforming embedded IPDC and EXIF metadata to structure similar metadata there too. So which means there is already a content management system. So it could easily integrate this already in the web page showing a photo. It should not remove such a CMS, should not remove a metadata embedded without any notice. That happens, warning note, uh, WordPress is a heavy killer of uh, photo metadata in images uh, if the native uh, library is used for this purpose. And not to remove relevant fields like creator, copyright notice, credit line, description, web statement of rights or licensor, they should stay in an image posted on the web. And hey, makers of tools for websites, so making modules, libraries, you should consider developing tools for an easy retrieval and display of metadata. And dear customers and users of this software, encourage the makers to consider this. We know exactly from talking to makers if our customers want that, we are quite uh, ready to do that. So dear customers and user, call your makers into that action. What are other helpers there? One is to get clear, to improve the delivery speed of photos on the web is not a good reason for stripping off all metadata. Slim files are delivered faster. But if you look at the metadata, which is taken for rights metadata, uh, sorry, at the bytes, which are used for rights metadata, that's a, such a small part of an image file that it does not slow down any delivery speed. Make metadata of photos on the web more transparent, which means display the fields. Google Images makes them transparent in search results. You will see this in the presentation right after mine. So you can see also the impact of that, the positive impact of that. Then uh, SIPA, 
that are the uh, people behind EXIF is currently discussing with IPDC, which EXIF tags set at the time of taking an image should be protected and conveyed endlessly, which means they are more or less frozen. They are embedded once and should never be changed anymore. Software makers will, will be encouraged to implement that. That's the current state of keeping them safe. Therefore, we should think about what about making safe embedded metadata photos uh, secure against not permitted changes? And what about the history of metadata changes which cannot be destroyed? You will hear later about that in the Adobe Content Authority, Authority Initiative presentation by Andy Parsons. Uh, they have plans to achieve that. Okay, I've created of that a short summary. You will be able to download this presentation as PDF file later from the photo metadata conference site. So you can read this fully relaxed and follow that. So we are now back to the starting view on photo metadata page. I hope it was an interesting investigation across all its islands and hops between them. Finally, I invite you all to let's be behind this goal, to let photo metadata tell the truth. Viewers with, will highly appreciate that as they trust in photos to document the truth, the reality. Thank you. Great, thanks very much, Michael. That was an excellent session. So we have a few minutes uh, before Francois's slot comes up and we do have some Q&A. Uh, so uh, let's uh, go through a couple if that's okay. So uh, we have one question from Esther who says, did Michael say that WordPress is a metadata killer? So do you want to maybe just go into a slight bit of detail about that? Yeah, uh, if you download uh, WordPress and install it as it is, uh, it uses the GDU, uh, GD library for dealing with photos. So if you upload a photo, it uh, gets downscaled uh, to preset uh, sizes. And this action is done by such a library. And unfortunately, that library is excellent in reformatting photo, but it ignores metadata. So the original file you have uploaded may include embedded metadata, but all the downscaled variants of that don't have any metadata anymore. So a little positive message is, uh, if you use uh, image magic, which fits quite well into uh, WordPress, this keeps the metadata even in the downscale versions. So take only care for that, then you have all the metadata embedded into the small variants of your big image. Great, thanks very much. And, uh, and the other question is the, uh, the one we get every time we talk about this stuff. Uh, from uh, Abdel Rahman Abdel Aziz, uh, how can we protect copyright metadata from editing by anyone? Uh, to be frank, that was a question which I heard already when I joined Photo Metadata in 2004. So uh, we know this, this is one of the real big problems of the business. And the quite unfortunate message is there is nothing which is really protecting metadata currently. So if you have an image file, this is in a technical way say, said only a sequence of bytes. And if you only use such a simple tool like a, a so-called hex editor, so by that you can change any byte in any file, it, uh, uh, with this hex editor you can go and change the metadata or you can modify them uh, in a way that they are, are not usable anymore. You, you can even strip this off completely. There is currently no means for protecting metadata embedded into an image file. Sorry. 
we then are stay quite... tuned for Andy's presentation, which we exactly, might start yeah. to look at that. <laughs> that so, may uh, be a quite interesting outlook. Great. Uh, just couple more minutes. So uh, Alexander asked also about metadata in WordPress. So I think we've answered that one now. Uh, Rebecca has asked, does the get PMD application have a built-in translator for the fields and values? So uh, I think that means uh, that, different that, human languages. That's, that's a good question. So I think, uh, well, actually what we, we could provide and we are currently thinking about that to have their also translations of the fields because oh, 20 years ago, we created the already a basic set of translations of field names, at least into the major international languages, French, Spanish, German. I'm sure yeah, that, that are the three we, we have already. Um, maybe something has to be updated a little bit, uh, but no, we even don't want to translate values because uh, this is a very tricky thing uh, as uh, it may change the message and this should be done by a human eye, by a human brain and not by a machine. Great. Uh, other questions from Alan. Uh, Get PMD site is great. Thanks for making the code available open source. Is that reference tool kept updated as new fields are adopted? Yes. So that's an easy answer. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, so, uh, an example is the image regions. So that was added to the standard just 12 months ago and yep, yep. the tool was updated almost straight away. To yeah, so if somebody experiments implementing this image region, you can check if it's implemented correctly by uploading this file to the get image site and you will see the result. The positive as I hope. Great. Uh, maybe the last one, uh, Tor Tieran Sen has said, uh, removing electronic rights information from works is illegal in many countries. Why is it so difficult to have software developers stop the stripping of metadata? <laughs> Maybe that's a, a rhetorical question, but uh, yes, we agree. <laughs> but, uh, it's uh, frustrating. Yeah, we well, uh, to, be, to be very frank, that's also a, an endless discussion about that. Uh, First, uh, the, 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 the laws are slightly different around the globe. And therefore the software makers don't want to be more strict than let's say the most uh, free and open law requires. And there are some laws which say, okay, removing metadata is not, uh, uh, not prohibited. You may do it. Uh, and if you want to sell your software in this country and it does not uh, remove, they may say, oh, I will not uh, pay uh, and buy the software anymore. So this is what I heard from uh, software makers. That's their reason for not being overly strict. That's reality, sorry. Great, okay, so we're on the hour. So thanks again, Michael, for great presentation and thanks to everyone for all your questions. Feel free to ask more questions in the Q&A uh, panel of the webinar and we can answer them by text or maybe later on during the, uh, the Q&A after the panel discussion.